focus on your product and focus on trying to get traction. What was Tapioca and how, how did Qualcomm find you? Well, that was, uh, Tapioca Mobile was pre-iPhone. And what we did was, um, we, that, that is uh, pre-iPhone, pre pre-Android, I should say. <laughs> and um, essentially, we had uh, mo mobile multimedia is is generally very fragmented on devices, and we had a transcoding solution in the cloud. So basically, like um, if you had a Twitter solution or a Facebook solution, it, you know, if you wanted a video bitly, you could actually send a video into us, and we would send you a short URL, and you could have that video distributed. Globally. What ended up happening is we're seeing now with Vidi and some of their competitors is or on Android, it's pretty much only to build a couple of platforms. So um, things have kind of changed, but that's what Tapioca was. It was a, um, a video transcoding solution in the cloud that worked across smartphones and um, you know, feature phones that supported video. How did Qualcomm find, find us? Well, I was an ex-Qualcommer before starting the company. Um, I don't think it's, you know, Tremendously different on mobile than it is on other devices. Um, you know, focus on the customer, trying to get it to type off the ground quickly. Um, probably one thing that's a little bit different with mobile is understanding customer acquisition channels. So for PC-based services, I think at least there's you know somewhat established paid and organic channels via search and uh, social. Uh, with mobile, it's kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> Um, and some of the companies that were previously providing paid distribution, uh, like Tap, uh, Tapjoy, have been kind of slapped down by Apple, or Chunk have been acquired by Apple. Um, so one of the things that we, on the infrastructure side, we've been kind of looking at trying to figure out, you know, uh, customer acquisition strategies again, whether they're paid or organic, uh, because those should be valuable to developers, but they're also valuable to the rest of our portfolio. Um, I think a lot of geeks tend to forget about you know how to scale the customer side. So you know, you may be great at building cool products, but unless you're really experienced on sort of viral mechanics uh, and on mobile that doesn't really even always help. Um, you know, you still need to figure out you know both paid and organic channels for customer acquisition. And so trying to understand how you get there and how what types of channels, also what your overall sort of customer value prop is. So if you're doing a free app, then you know, really need to get very good at low cost, no cost solutions. If you're doing higher customer revenue generating solutions, then maybe you can afford to do paid or get, uh, paid channels for customer acquisition um, that might be effective as well. Yeah, with, with that, the funny thing is that recently we just had to deal with uh, KDDI to support Orion, and there's a lot. And so don't come to us and ask this question. We, we can't really do this and say, how did you get this deal with KDDI? Well, it takes a long time. And so there's like really no magic bullet. But I do have one tip, is that they actually, yeah. Uh, go drinking with Japan, with Japanese, and bring, bring a big budget. <laughs> <laughs> Same in Korea, too. <laughs> 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 Take take karaoke coaching lessons. <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding. Like, that's really important. Yeah, and make sure that you either think Justin person, Bieber, okay. Justin Bieber, or Lady Gaga. That will do you a lot of good. Um, but, but actually, with KDDI, what what happened was we actually was um, last year at um, TechCrunch this rock. We actually have a little like table there at the time. We even have our fun funding them. We're just hanging out. That's how they found us. It wasn't like we we didn't sing karaoke and we weren't drinking with any of these guys. We were really just hanging out at this rock. Um, so that was actually a really like good experience for us. It, a good investment for a couple thousand dollars. But you know we it started conversation in the valley, uh, and then of course we made many 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 other trips. Uh, after that, you know, working in Japan and Korea, but it really started here, and there's, uh, Brian spent a lot of time talking, like, continuously, forever, so, so like once. That's, that's one thing, but on, on the other hand, just to kind of add on to what you guys were saying earlier, I think that it sounds great to have partnership with Big Hero, with the, uh, OEM, but I think any of these guys still want to partner up with any mobile apps that already have traction. If they have heard of it, they will come to you. Um, if you come and pitch them, they never heard of you, and your product seems like sucked, then it's not going to work. 
So the fundamental is still you know, very, very important. Um, so with that, I'm going to let you guys ask two questions, and that's it. And then they're going to hang out afterwards. So, well, hopefully. Then make sure that we drink all the beer. <laughs> all right, so first question. Yeah, um, now that NMC is going to be out there, what do you see the potential? NFC? Yeah, for the next version. I mean, I, I, I'll say this. I mean, NFC is associated with payments, but it's, I mean, being a Qualcomm guy, it's, it's actually a radio. So there's a, I mean, I, I, I think NFC may not end up being, the, you know, you don't, don't equate the two. NFC is like, think of it like Bluetooth. It's, it's, it's really, it's like super short range radio. And so the question is, what can you do with super short range? Radio, right? For example, if you actually look back historically at Bluetooth, you know, Bluetooth was going to be this personal area network, and it ended up becoming, at least for now, um, you know, kind of a, you know, a speaker system for, for your cell phone. So, I would throw that question back to you. I mean, just I would just I would say just don't equate it to payments. What I'm are saying, you, or did you ask about payments? You asked about NFC. And I'm talking about like the API. So, are we going to rely on the phone manufacturers to open up the API so they can access? that device, because there's all other things where you can slap on the NFC to a phone to yeah. talk to your device. Well, we would love that at Qualcomm. <laughs> the, 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 I'll just put it this way. The OS guys have a lot of say in this. Let's end with that. Okay. All right, second question. Last question. Once, twice, okay. Yeah, uh, so now with like Microsoft and Google getting into hardware, um, do you guys see the trend towards sort of more walled gardens? And like, are we coming into a period of less good consumer experience because of this, or what's your perspective? Um, no, there, I, I don't know that mobile has been a particularly awesome user experience ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to say that uh, benevolent dictatorship through Apple has been the first decent UX for mobile, and jury's out whether Android is actually a decent UX or not. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, but my partner used to <laughs> Google I.O., so she is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I'm generally of the opinion that, you know, as long as it's not a monopolist playing field, then people will compete, and UX will probably be a competitive area. Um, I think it's when you have too much dominance by one sector that people like Facebook get fucking lazy and the mobile experience goes to absolute hell in a hat basket, but, you know. I don't know, Twitter and Facebook mobile experiences suck, like, completely on, you know, iOS right now. I don't know what the fuck either of those groups are thinking about. <laughs> you know, I hope the Instagram guys give, you know, Facebook... You'd think with, like, 10, 15 billion dollars they'd be able to hire a couple of decent mobile developers. <laughs> you know, they keep saying that UX is going to get better than that shit. And I'm just like, it's, it's unfucking usable right now. Like Facebook, I, I hope somebody from Facebook is listening to me because it's unfucking usable. Right now. Um, and Twitter is not much better. The like, native Twitter client on iPhone is not much better. LinkedIn's got a little better recently, you know. But like it was, it was absolutely astonishing to me that the three major social networking platforms, mobile app experience, which were just complete fucking crap, you know. And, and, and you guys figure that the only reason that that's the case is that they're so uh, entrenched in their revenue streams or existing position in market that they don't feel like that's a competitive place to differentiate. I, mean, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg's a stupid fuck. I don't think that you. I think he would pay attention to it if he thought it was you know something that was important. That's probably why I spent a billion dollars on Instagram. Um, but yeah, like I don't know, they're building native apps. I guess that's or, sorry, they're not building native apps. That's, that's probably part of the issue. Where the hell are we going with this question? Um, <laughs> I mean, that being said, because of all the f ups out there, I think if we look at Asia, like even China, there's uh, hundreds of these ODMs which are basically building their own Android experience on their own phones because the UI sucks. And you know, more legitimate companies like HTC have their you know sense and these other um, you know made you know own, own made uh, UIs. But I think in China and the rest of Asia, rest of the world, they're actually thinking in their own hands and making it a better experience, so, second that. So with that, let's give these guys a great round of applause.